Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Brayden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, and thank you for stopping by. All right, guys, today we are going to talk about the 10 new laws that they just put in place in San Jose from the city council at the request of their mayor. Now, this is the most extreme gun control I've seen, and that says a lot coming from California. This is high level crazy. But I do owe you to walk through all 10 of them because we are on a mission on this channel and you guys are doing amazing work. Over the past six months, we've been able to accomplish incredible things together and I just want to say thank you, I'm proud of you, and let's keep going. we got a lot of work to do. But this is a good thing to focus on because it hits on what they actually want to do and we get in front of it and we get right in front and say basically that ain't happening. Now, big hat tip to FPC, Firearms Policy Coalition. They have nothing to do with this video, but in the article I'm reading and referencing for this video, which is in the description box below, there is a list of all of the individual actions that the city council has taken, and Firearm Policy Coalition has a constitutional challenge response right below it. It's in the, the, the description box below, really good read, and also, I'd love to hear if you guys rank this the same way I do, and if not, let me know how you would rank this from 10 being the least crazy to one being the most crazy. Let's dive in. All right. Looking out for one another. Mayor Licardo is proposing an utterly dystopian program designed to turn neighbor against neighbor in support of his tyrannical and oppressive policies. One wonders what other classes of people he would like to use community snitches to target for heavy-handed police actions. Number 9. Gun buyback programs. San Jose cannot buy back guns it never owned, and it is a waste of taxpayer resources to support programs that have not shown to improve public safety or reduce crime. Worse still, these gun buyback programs allow criminals to be paid to anonymously dispose of guns used in crime and destroy evidence. If the city wants to solve violent crimes, perhaps they shouldn't be helping violent criminals get away with murder. <laughs> Ooh, spicy. And we're only on nine. Let's get to eight. Leveraging federal information for early intervention. FPC will closely monitor any developments in information sharing between local, state, and federal governments for compliance with constitutional principles and privacy statutes. Awesome. Number seven, and this actually got hard for me because there's so much crazy. It is outrageous that Mayor Licardo wants to use Big Brother style omnivalence to record gun owners every move, violating the privacy of millions, especially at risk firearm purchasers. This Orwellian requirement would be rightly universally opposed were, there, were the city to impose similar video and audio recording mandates in mosques, churches, bookstores, or abortion clinics. <laughs> and that's for straw purchases or suicide prevention. Let's keep going. Again, let me know how you guys would rank these in, this, in the uh, comments below. Gun violence restraining orders. We've talked about these a lot on the channel. It is unsurprising that the authoritarian Mayor Licardo would wish to promote the use of laws that use ex parte secret hearings and seizures to disarm people who exercise their rights. Like the right to keep and bear arms, the right to due process is not up for debate. These guys are on it. Impounding guns from those who do not comply. Not only is Mayor Licardo's proposed ordinance unconstitutional, he adds insult to injury by outright threatening those who cannot comply with armed police officers and force. Not only is that an outrageous abuse of law enforcement power, it is a dangerous approach to policing that will surely escalate tensions between officers and the public. Number four, and this is where it gets really hard. Reducing the public cost of gun violence. Mayor Licardo's proposed fees are constitutionally offensive and would be severely burdened the right to keep and bear arms. Worse still, they have put lawful access to firearms out of reach of poor and underprivileged individuals in high crime neighborhoods. People who rely on their firearms to defend their lives and families from violent criminals. These guys are doing pretty good work. Number three, ghost guns. America has a long history and tradition of individuals making and assembling their own arms. And indeed, such practices have always been lawful. Law-abiding uh, people have a right to self-manufacture firearms for their own lawful use, and FPC will aggressively protect the rights of San Jose residents to build their own firearms at home. Number two, assault weapons ban. FPC will vigorously defend our historic victory in our Miller v. Bonta challenge, that's the AR-15 overturn of the ban, to the state of California's unconstitutional ban on so-called assault weapons. The city of San Jose may not like what the Constitution requires, but we will work to ensure that it respects the rights of its residents to buy and possess these common semi-automatic firearms that are overwhelmingly held and used for lawful purposes in the vast majority of the United States. And now, number one. Reducing gun harm through an insurance mandate. 
San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo's proposed insurance requirement is burdensome, burdensome unconstitutional, and pro prohibited by California law. Insurance companies cannot issue policies to insure against one's unlawful acts, and the Second Amendment prohibits local governments from imposing such requirements on gun owners. <laughs> it's like, so that's what they've done. All 10 of those are exactly the way they've listed it out. And I hope that the way that I just brought it to you guys was a little bit fun, but it also got you the information you needed. But I want to know what you guys, would you guys rank it the same way or would you change it up a little bit? Let me know in the comments field below. Now, the last thing I want to say on this is this is a part of the process. And I know that it is not fun. The part of the process is they have to overstep and they have to push too far. And someone like FPC, Firearms Policy Coalition, has to take them to court and work it up the chain. That's the way that it has to go. It's got to be crossed, violated, gone through the courts, gone through the appeal process, getting to the Supreme Court. That is the way this is all going. And mark my words, people, on this channel, on this day, we are going to see a lot more cases that are gun related going to the Supreme Court because a very conservative majority has serious issues with the Second Amendment infringements that are happening, especially if you look at the background on the case law for each of the actual SCOTUS judges. But this is a process. We're making moves. Keep your head in the fight. I'm proud to be here with you. And until tomorrow, let me know what you think. And I'll see you later.